Hi everyone, my name is Biv, one of the orthopedic doctors. I'll be teaching you how to do a lower limb spinal examination um, today on ED. So before beginning an examination, important to do hand hygiene and introduce yourself and make sure you confirm the patient's details. Can I have your full name, Ed? Yeah, Edward Sutando. And your date of birth? 22-11-97. Okay. I'll be doing an exam that involves you walking back and forth and looking at the power and looking at examining your lower limbs. Is that okay with you today? Sure. Okay, no worries. I like to begin any kind of spinal examination with a gait exam first. So can you please walk to the edge and back for me? Yep. Thank you. So looking importantly for any wide-based ataxic gait, it gives you an indicator of long track signs or pathology. Um, and any abnormalities such as a high stepping gait, which would be indicative of a foot drop as well. Um, now, it also like to Romberg sign, which is can be which can be complicated by spinal pathology. Can I make sure you're ready to catch your patient if they fall? Can you please close your eyes for me? Yeah, no worries. He's well balanced. So Romberg's negative. Um, thank you. So begin with a general inspection of the spine overall. So looking from front, back, and the sides. First, looking at the front for any asymmetry, any abnormalities, um, any skin changes at all. I'm going to get you to face that way for me, Ed. Thank you. Now, looking at the thoracic kyphosis and the lumbar lordosis, they look like appropriate curvatures in Ed. Um, once again, looking for any over any over exaggeration of these curvatures at all. Can you please look that way for me, Ed? Thank you. Now, looking from the back, looking at the skin, looking for any scars, any in indication of previous surgery, um, any skin changes, or any abnormal rotation or curvatures of the spine, such as a scoliosis, I can appreciate anything like that in Ed. And now, can you look to the left for me? Once again, thoracic kyphosis, lumbar lordosis. Thank you. And now, can you look at me? Um, so, general inspection is important to look for any uh, asymmetry or abnormalities. Now, moving on to feel. Can you face this way for me, Ed? So. Do you have any pain at all in your lumbar spine or in your back? No? Okay, important to identify if your patient has any pain first, but palpating the tips of the spinous processes, I'm starting from the top here, but we're focusing mainly on lumbar spine, looking and feeling in the center of the bony prominences for any pain at all, or, or also in the paraspinal muscles around the vertebrae. It's important because pain that's centered more around the spinous processes is most likely related to a disc pathology, whereas pain around the paraspinal muscles themselves could be related to facet joint disease or degenerative changes. Did you have any pain during that at all? No worries. Now moving on to move. So while I have Ed here, um, I like to do a showbiz test at this point as well because we're already getting him to do half of the test. So testing lumbar flexion. Can I, so between the aces, putting two fingers in the middle of the spine, can I please ask you to bend down and touch your toes? Yep, thank you. So there's over 10 centimeters of, so there's a modified showbiz test. Thank you very much. Over 10 centimeters of expansion in between my fingers. That's in keeping with normal lumbar flexion of the spine. It also allows me to, so that's Schober's test, but I'm also looking at the range of motion of this lumbar spine as well. Now, can I get you to lean back for me as much as you can without falling over? Thank you. Looking for lumbar extension. And now, keeping your hand attached, um, touching your leg, can you bend to the left as much as you can for me? So lateral flexion, flexion, and same for the other side. Thank you very much. And also testing rotation, which is a movement that happens at the thoracic spine, not the lumbar spine. Can you please, keeping your legs straight, not moving them, turn all the way to the left for me and all the way to the right. Thank you. So he has a normal range of motion, his lumbar and thoracic spine, which is um, important. Do you have any pain or any movements of those at all? No. Um, great. So look for your move. Now I'll be moving on to the neurological part of this examination. Would you mind please sitting on the bed and laying down? Come around to the side. So this part of the examination is done using the Asia assessment score. This is an internationally recognized um, and standardized score assessing the dermatomes, the myotomes of the lower limb. Um, upper limb was covered in a previous video. This is to help communicate and also um, explain exam findings to, for spinal pathology patients. Um, and that's important because they could have significantly changed management based on these exam findings themselves. Um, so I'd start by doing the dermatomes. The dermatomes are by testing light touch. Um, they're graded one, um, zero to two. Zero being no sensation whatsoever. One being intact sensation but impaired with paresthesia or um, autotensorium or dullness. And two being fully intact as well. Important to compare between sides as you do this exam too. I'll only be doing light touch for this one. So the L2 dermatome is in the anterior thigh. Can you feel me touching you there, Ed? Yeah. You feel me touching you there? Yeah. Same both sides? Yeah. Yep. L3 is over the knee. You feel me touching you there? Yeah. 
feel me touching it there? Yeah. Yep. L4 is over the medial malleolus. Can you feel me touching it there? Yeah. Feel me touching it there? Yeah. Great. L5 is over the lateral malleolus. Can you feel me touching it there? Yeah. Feel me touching it there? Yeah. And S1 is at the base of the first metatarsal. So you can feel me touching it there? Yeah. Feel me touching it there? Yeah. Was that the same both sides throughout? Yeah. Yeah. So sensation is two out of two bilaterally in all dermatomes. Now moving on to the myotomes. So grading of myotomes is important because it significantly changes this patient's um, urgency and like urgency and time to intervention as well. Zero out of five is complete loss of power, no movement whatsoever. One out of five would be a flicker of movement. So if I asked Ed to raise his leg up here, I could maybe see his quadriceps contract, but no movement whatsoever. Two out of five is with some light assistance, being able to do the movement against gravity. So by helping Ed here, if I ask him to raise his leg, but if, I, if without support he falls down, that would be two out of five. Three out of five is able to resist against gravity, but not against any external pressure. So can you lift your leg up for me, Ed? Keep it straight for me, yep. But then with any kind of applied pressure, he's unable to resist. Three out of five is a threshold for when you say a patient power is impaired in, in keeping with spinal pathology or warranting intervention. Four out of five would be able to resist me, but not fully. It's important to compare to the contralateral side in this case, because a lot of older patients will have four out of five power, and that is normal for them. And five out of five is good resistance against um, good pressure. So keep that up for me. Keep that up. So that's testing hip flexion. That's it. Now moving on to the examination of the power. L2 is hip flexion. So can you push up against me, Ed? Thank you. Comparing the contractual side, up against me. Good. L3 is knee extension. Can you keep your knee like this and push out against me? Yep. Keep your knee like this. Push out against me. L4 is dorsiflexion. So immobilizing the ankle. Can you push up against me, Ed? Yep. Push up against me. L5 is um, dorsiflexion of the, um, of the big toe. So push up against me. Push up against me. And S1 is plantar flexion of the ankle. So push down against me, push down against me. So power is five out of five in the lower limb. Important to immobilize the joint you're testing so you can isolate that myotome specifically. Um, now we want to do reflexes. So I knew the knee jerk reflex, the ankle jerk reflex, and the Babinski reflex. So just relax me head. I take the whole weight of the knee like here, palpate for the patella tendon. This is testing L3, L4. Yep, and relax again from your head. Yep, great. Um, and now testing the plantar jerk, so this is S1, S2. I ask them to flex the knee and ask a uh, dorsiflex the ankle to put the Achilles tendon on stretch, make it easier to elicit the reflex. Yep, similar here. Yep, no worries. Um, reflexes will be commented on in terms of hyperreflexive or um, absent or um, reduced. So that will help you in determining whether to um, whether there's an upper motor neuron lesion or not. Another important reflex is the Babinski's reflex. It must be done for any kind of spinal pathology because if it's positive, it does indicate possible um, compression of the spinal nerve roots, the spinal cord itself. So taking the tip of your um, tip of your so this tip here of the reflex hammer, tendon hammer, running it alongside the bottom of the heel, alongside the lateral aspect, and up. And so you're looking for the curling of the toes like this. You need to be looking at the first toe, importantly, because it's the first initial movement of the first toe that indicates how the reflex is graded. So if the first initial movement is dorsiflexion, that's a normal Babinski, but if the first initial movement is plantar flexion, that's a positive Babinski's kind, which is indicative of upper motor neuron lesion. Now, after you've done the reflexes and the myotomes, a really important point for any um, spinal pathology or presentation of acute back pain is in terms of the red flags of back pain, you need to do a digital rectal examination looking for saddle anesthesia as well as looking for anal tone. This obviously isn't going to be demonstrated here today, but it's important to do so with the chaperone present and with the appropriate consent before you proceed. This has to be done in anybody with acute back pain because it's looking for chordal equina, which is a medical emergency and needs an urgent spinal decompression. Um, so that should be done, should be mentioned that at the end of your OSCE. Um, I'd also move on to do the sciatic nerve stretch test and the femoral nerve stretch test as well. The sciatic nerve stretch test, the sciatic nerve can be impinged upon from the level of the 
um, foramina of the spine all the way down, so the multiple sites of impingement, but if positive can indicate possible spinal pathology. A positive straight leg raise is roughly at, so at 30 degrees, if you are able to reproduce the symptoms of pain shooting down the whole length of the leg, that's a positive sciatic stretch test. Not just pain in the hamstring and not past, like not overly past 30 degrees because if I move Ed's leg too much, it will cause pain in his hamstring at some point. So I'd ask Ed to relax his leg for me, keep it fully extended and let me know if he feels any pain roughly at this point. Are you in any pain at all, Ned? Ed? No. So that's a negative straight leg raise test. If he was positive and he was feeling pain, I could get him to the point where he's starting to reproduce those symptoms and then flex the knee. That should take away, that should have some more slack for the sciatic nerve and should resolve his symptoms as well. That's a sciatic straight leg raise test. Now we're doing the femoral stretch test. I'll, I like to, you can do this one laterally or with the patient prone, sometimes it's more difficult for the patient. I can ask Ed, can you please turn over with your face down to me? Yep. Similar principles to the straight leg raise. This one is putting a nerve down the front, the femoral nerve on stretch by extending the hip and by flexing the knee as well. So by doing both, seeing if he's having any reproducible, reproducible symptoms of pain, shooting down his leg by stretching, stretching the femoral nerve. Um, and if he, is that painful at all, Ed? No, so he doesn't have any symptoms there. And by extending the leg, I should be able to relieve that pressure because that adds more slack as well. So if they do have pain at some point, you should extend the leg and see if that resolves the pain. Um, no worries, thank you very much, Ed. That concludes the lower limb spinal exam video.